friends, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya from wallstreetmojo.com. This is part 5 of our ratio analysis video series and in this installment we will learn about current ratios. In simple terms, current ratio is the liquidity ratio that indicates company's capacity to repay short term loans that are due within the next year. So in this tutorial, we basically have four objectives. Number one, understand what current ratio actually means. Number two, what its formula and calculations. Number three, calculate current ratio for Colgate. And number four, look at its interpretation. But before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder. We will be working on the files which we have for this video, that is the Colgate case study. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, then please do so from the description link below. And also to keep yourself updated with the investment banking and core finance concepts, please do subscribe to our channel, Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. What is current ratio? Current ratio is actually a part of the ratio analysis framework and it comes under this solvency ratio. Though the solvency ratio is divided into three parts, we'll be limiting our discussion right now to the current ratio part. So what is current ratio? Again, the current ratio is basically company's capacity to uh, repay its short term uh, you know, loans or uh, liabilities over the next one year period. So uh, what does that means basically that whether the company has enough short term assets to cover for its current liabilities. Actually, explain this with the help of a formula. Current ratios formula is nothing but current assets divided by current liabilities. What are current assets? Current assets is nothing but those assets which can be liquidated, which can be sold, which can be liquidated within a year's time into cash. Likewise, what are current liabilities? These are those liabilities which have to be repaid within an year. So that one year period is the most important thing to note. So uh, current assets examples could be something like, uh, you know, marketable securities. Current assets are like cash, marketable securities, accounts receivables, and then we have inventory. Now, these are the common examples of uh, current assets. Uh, prepaid expenses could be another one. So these are the four or five examples of current assets. Examples of current liabilities could be uh, something like uh, accounts payable, accrued expenses, accrued taxes. And uh, similarly, you know, there could be some other uh, short term liabilities like uh, short term loan that needs to be paid within a year. And you can also consider current portion of long term debt also as a part of the current liability because that also needs to be paid within a year's time frame. OK, so these are the examples of current assets and current liabilities. Now, let's go back to our discussion of current ratio. So as you can see, the current ratio can be calculated as current assets divided by current liabilities. Let's take an example current assets. Let's say for a company, current assets was 100 and current liabilities was 80. OK, so how much will be the current ratio? Current ratio, as we can see in the formula, would be current assets divided by current liabilities and it comes out to be 1.25. So whether this is a good position or not, actually, if you consider only this ratio, it seems like yes, current assets are enough to pay for its current liabilities and hence this is a good position to be in, right? Likewise, let's say if current ratio was less than one, then what would you have done? If current ratio is greater than one, obviously we are saying that it's a good position to be in. When current ratio is less than one, we note that current assets won't be enough to pay for current liabilities. So it's not a good position, right? You have to find out other liquidity 
measures you know equity measures means you know you have to find out other types of uh, ways uh, via loan from bank etc to pay off your current liabilities right to be sorted out so this is not a good position to be in if current ratio is equal to 1 obviously it's just enough to ensure that your liabilities are met so current assets current liabilities and its ratio is called as uh, current ratio and uh, it's a very simple ratio to actually look at so having understood uh, what current ratio is and how do we interpret current ratios let's now look at uh, how we calculate this for colgate now that we have understood how current ratio is calculated let's understand its interpretation so there are could be three scenarios right current ratio greater than 1 current ratio equal to 1 and current ratio as less than 1 so which one do you think is the most desirable obviously current ratio if it is greater than 1 that means you have sufficient current assets to cover for its current liability so this would be a good position how about current ratio equal to 1 current ratio equal to 1 would mean sufficient just enough so that would be okay but current ratio which is less than 1 would be a tricky situation so i would call this as a bad position to be in because you don't have sufficient current assets to cover for its current liabilities and you might have to find out some other ways to uh, or additional liquidity measures you might have to take to pay for your current liabilities all right so this is how you can interpret uh, current ratios now having understood the current ratio in detail let us look at how this applies to our case study that is colgate in order to calculate colgate's current ratio we require only two things that is the current assets and the current liabilities so in this balance sheet we have this five year data 2016 to 2020 and we have this current assets and if you scroll down you will have this current liabilities as well current assets here comprises of four things cash and cash equivalents receivables inventory and other current assets the total is 4338 for december 16 and when we scroll down uh, current liabilities are divided into five parts uh, notes and loans payables current portion of long term debt accounts payables accrued income taxes and other accruables so all of these liabilities are like the ones which you have to pay within a year's time so uh, it comes out to be 3305 so let's uh, scroll down where we have some space to calculate current ratio i want you to actually look at row number 97 so this is the place where we can calculate current ratios okay so as you note current ratio formula has is very simple current assets divided by current liabilities so let's do that current assets 4338 divided by 3305 that is current liabilities it comes out to be 1.31 times right and don't worry about the x here i have pre-formatted it x is just that it's a multiple okay so uh, current ratio 1.31 you can copy and uh, paste this formula across the years so uh, 1.36 for 2017 1.14 for 2018 and 1.03 uh, it has reduced so for 2019 and less than one for uh, 2020 so as you can see here current ratio for colgate doesn't sound uh, good over the past few years right 2018 that's where it started declining and it has now come down to less than one so it's kind of an alarming situation and you might have to investigate this as an analyst as to what has happened so uh, for doing that you might want to go back to the current assets and the current liabilities and see what why it might have contributed so if you look at uh, cash and cash equivalents receivables these are the four items that contribute current assets has there been any decline over the years so i think if you look at cash and cash equivalents you might notice that as compared to these two years you know this has declined a bit right so it is 888 million as compared to 1315 in December 16. So might be this could be one of the reasons where uh, because of which you know current assets have declined as in in, in proportionate terms. Likewise, um, if you look at receivables, right? 1411 and it has it is now 1264. So this has also declined a bit. 
so maybe you know these are this is the reason why current assets have not increased to that proportion as much as you know current liabilities would have had so let's look at the current liabilities too current liabilities any jump as we can see maybe other accruals have increased over the past two years this could also have resulted in an increase in current liabilities and that's why the ratio has declined likewise um, this could be one of the other reasons that is accounts payables have increased too so uh, it's a combination of factors so current ratio has uh, declined over a period of years and it's a combination of uh, various reasons like cash in cash equivalents have declined as well as other accruals have increased so uh, all of these uh, combined together so at the end of the day you also might have to look at the sec filings to understand whether these this company is in the safe zone or not as far as current ratio goes it seems to be in a precarious situation the last thing i want to discuss about uh, the current ratio is its limitations okay so it comes with lots of limitations i will highlight you know primarily uh, two or three of them the first one is that it doesn't consider the quality of assets so what do i mean by this is that you know you remember current assets are divided into various types as i said cash and cash equivalent marketable securities account receivables prepaid expenses etc right so let's imagine a situation where we have let's say company a and uh, company a has all of its current assets let's say it's 100 okay and uh, all of its current assets as cash okay and let's say there is another company that's called as company b and uh, for company b all of its current assets is in uh, let's say inventory okay so both the companies company a and company b both of them have 100 assets current assets let's imagine that current liabilities is 80 right and i will assume that company b also has 80 as its current liability so what will be its current ratio as we calculated earlier as well for these numbers this is 100 divided by 80 that is 1.25 and 100 divided by 80 as 1.25 for both the companies. Which company is better off when we talk about current ratios? Now, the question is, which company is better off in terms of paying capability when we consider the paying capability with respect to current liabilities, right? You have to pay off your current liabilities within a year, right? So when company A has all of its in cash, so this has a right quality of asset when it comes to repaying capabilities. On the other hand, when we consider company B, this uh, inventory will take a longer time in, to convert into, let's say, goods which can be sold. And then finally, when it is sold, then that's when you will get cash, right? So this has a longer cash cycle associated with it. So this might not be the right quality of, uh, I mean, good quality to pay off your current liabilities so it doesn't consider the quality of assets is what i was trying to tell you okay when we talk about current ratios so to address this we actually look at other ratios these are like a quick ratios and cash ratios we will discuss this in our subsequent uh, uh, you know uh, videos but for the time being you understand this as the limitation of current ratios second limitation is that you know it doesn't give us anything about the profitability of the company cannot be measured using this okay obviously uh, it's not income statement ratio so it's just a balance sheet ratio so it doesn't measure the profitability it doesn't give us any indication of how the profitability of the company is or how this ratio affects the profitability there's no relationship as such now uh, another limitation uh, with respect to this is that it can be manipulated at, as well at times. You know. uh, manipulation would mean, obviously, when we talk about the balance sheet and income statement and cash flows, you know, all of these are can be subject to accounting gimmicks as well from the management side. So uh, let's say if there is a scenario where current assets and current liabilities increase by the same amount, same amount, okay? 
what happens if the current assets and current liabilities increase by the same amount your current ratio will decline you can try that you can try that let, let me do that right I'll, I'll do that 120 so i've increased this by 20 and let me increase current liabilities also by 20 so how much is the ratio now it was 1.25 earlier now it is 1.2 i'll just revert it earlier it was 180 right so current assets was 100 and 80 was the liability right current liabilities so the ratio was 100 divided by 80 now i've increased this to 120 and 100 right both of them increase by the same amount the ratio will become 1.2 so obviously it can be subject to manipulation like this you know if you want to put a rosy picture about your company uh, you can increase you can decrease your current assets and current liabilities or you can increase or decrease you know you can do it accordingly another limitation is that uh, this ratio can also be manipulated manipulated means that uh, you know this can be changed by doing some accounting gimmicks uh, what do i mean by this is let's say if you increase uh, current assets and current liabilities by the same amount what is the impact on current ratio and uh, let's say I'll, I'll just put some numbers and you will appreciate uh, after that current assets current liabilities right so uh, in our earlier example it was 100 and 80 let's say if you increase it by the same amount let's say now it becomes 120 and 100 so what happens to the current ratio current ratio earlier was 100 divided by 80 that was 1.25 and now in another case how much is this 1.2 so uh, increase in current asset and uh, the same amount if you increase the current liabilities the ratio actually decreases right so may not be the good you know uh, way to look at it but let's say if you decrease it in the same amount let's say now it becomes from 100 it becomes 80 and from 80 becomes 60 as current liabilities what will be the ratio as you can see the ratio increases here so uh, if management has to manipulate um, has to manipulate means that if they want to manipulate uh, so that they provide a rosy picture to the analysts you know they have an i mean they can possibly do this so as an analyst you need to be mindful that these things can happen and uh, therefore you need to analyze the balance sheets very carefully so as i said this is a manipulation and it's a limitation of current ratio it can be manipulated easily okay so i i hope uh, you know it's clear as far as the current ratio is concerned i hope you found this video to be useful please do like and share and if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video then you may do so by writing about it in the comment section also we come up with interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics regularly so if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notification about our latest videos. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.